this galaxy is going to be such a crazy build, very, very unique and very extreme. And a big part of that is the chassis that's being built and the, all the crazy race suspension components. So I thought I would go over a lot of the details, share a lot with you. I'm learning a lot and uh, thought maybe a lot of you out there would take an interest in it as well. NASCAR spindle and hub. This is a three inch bore. Big bearings will last long, be really durable. Five eighths inch lug studs. And the spindle nut is really cool. It's like a wing shape. And then this washer captures it. And you can flip it over to offset the little spline so you can get exactly the torque that you want. The entire suspension is heim jointed and or bearings like these. That way there's no play in the suspension. And that way whenever you make adjustments to the shocks, it affects the suspension as much as possible because there's very, very low resistance in all the joints. So even the ball joints are low friction. These are Howell racing ball joints. They have a little snap ring that goes in the top, and then you can adjust this to tighten on the ball joint. And you just, you basically snug them up, but you can move the ball joint with your hand. It's very low friction compared to, this is the Corvette chassis, and it uses stock C6 suspension. So these are factory, and you can see the big rubber bushing in there. So. The bolt goes through a metal sleeve and then there's a lot of rubber bushing around the sleeve and then the suspension around that. So as you can imagine, if you give it a lot of gas or you brake really hard or you're turning, there's actually quite a bit of flex in this. So the whole suspension will flex to the rear or forward or out and in. And so it makes for a nice quiet ride, but it's not the best for performance. And that's why everything in here is heim jointed. Moving on to steering, this is the steering arm connected to the spindle. This is the tie rod. You can see this one's bent. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's an extra adjuster link. Genheim joints. And this is the rack and pinion power steering. This is the same power steering that is used in that race car. Uh, works really good. Very compact, but high power and pretty good steering feel through it. So happy to have that on here. Something that's really cool about this steering arm is that it has the slug in it. Right now the slug's set up to zero offset, so it's, it's centered right now. And this is a half inch offset. So the cool thing with this for me in particular is I'll be doing some big track stuff with this, but I am gonna want to autocross it. So ideally, if you're on big track stuff, high speed stuff, you don't want too much, uh, you don't want the steering to be too fast because it's really sensitive and small movements at high speeds at like 150 miles an hour uh, will uh, unsettle the car. So what the way this works is um, if it's offset to the outside, it's gonna slow the steering down because this is the pivot point, it's farther away from the pivot point. So. A little bit of movement here is going to affect this and turn the front less. And then when I go auto crossing, I pull that bolt, pull this slug out, flip it around. Now it's on the towards a lot closer towards the pivot point here, and now the steering will be a lot quicker. So quick for autocross, slow and precise for big track stuff. Something else that's cool. This is a bolt, a proper bolt, and so you can see spacers under here. And then this is also a straight bolt, and so you can see spacers under here. So once this car is set up and is at ride height, I can adjust the height of this end link such that it's, it's fairly level when the car is, is at ride height. And what that reduces is any sort of bump steer. So if at ride height this 
end link is angled down or it's angled up, then whenever you go over bumps, you're going to get a lot more bump steer. So unlike a normal car, street car, where the, the tie rod ends would be tapered, these use bolts, and then you can use spacers, which is pretty slick. Let's talk about this tie rod, this bent tie rod here. I'm going to be running 335 series front tires, and they're quite wide, and there's a decent amount of tire that is to the inside of this hub. So we can move this here to... Um, so you can imagine if this is turning right, you have the center of the wheel, and then you have the, the barrel of the rim coming into here. So the fact that this is bent now, it clears this wheel. If it was straight, the wheel tire could hit that tie rod in, which obviously would be a bad day. So pretty slick setup. And then one issue with, with bent tie rods is that uh, since they're not in a straight line, you can't, you, you could only make adjust it uh, 360 degrees. So I could turn it 360 degrees this way, or I could turn it 360 degrees this way to make adjustments to the end links. And that's why there's this helper end link in here. This one, I can, I can do big tuning and rough tuning here, and then once I get it close, I do all of my small tuning, the toe in and toe out settings with this one. It's pretty neat. The slugs, by the way, are used all over the suspension so you can adjust and lock in your settings for camber and caster and all that stuff. Looking at the front sway bar, this is a really big front sway bar and you know the stickier the tires, the bigger your tires, uh, the more grip you have, the more sway bar you're going to want. So this is one and three quarter inch outer diameter sway bar and it is hollow. Really big beefy arm on there and again this is it's 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 inboard and then it flares out and that way we clear the the wheel and it's just a straight rod goes through a tube there's a bushing right there and it goes through the tube splined ends there'll be a, a bolt through here to sandwich it make sure it doesn't come off something worth noting on here that I learned recently is that these this style of sway bar as it twists it actually gets shorter just a small amount shorter but it's enough to where you want to make sure there's a gap let's see right here a gap between the bushing and the sway bar and that way when it does get shorter the sway bar doesn't bind up against this bushing um, you could, if you snug those up, the car would, the suspension would compress, move up and down freely as long as both tires were moving up and down. But then once you would get into a corner, this would squeeze those bushings and it would bind up your suspension. And suddenly you'd have no suspension, It'd be really dangerous. So if you do run one of these race style front sway bars, rear sway bars, make, make sure to leave yourself a little gap. This might trip you out. It did me. This is the Galaxy front brakes rotor, but this is the hub. The rotor is attached to the back of the hub instead of sliding over the lug studs and on the front it's actually attached to the back. So it's more inboard and I think that that you know, the bigger bearing is on the inside here. And I think that having the brakes inboard is a lot less strain on the components. And it also moves the weight inboard. I love Stop Tech brakes. I had them on my Viper, and they were super, super good. So I'm excited to be running them on the Galaxy. These are 14-inch diameter front rotors. And big six piston calipers. Really, really cool.